The biggest names in the game are here. X Miss Jackson, Flaxen, Waxen, California University of Pennsylvania. This is the Rob Dibble Show. All right. Welcome back to the Rob Dibble Show. Fox Sports 979 Hartford, Fox Sports 1300 New Haven, Ben Darnell. Being with you on another 5 o'clock fun time. Every like, hour is fun. It's always fun, but the 5 o'clock hour, our drive time audience, we really like to hook up with some games and prizes, and hopefully today is that case. Adam Giardino in for dibs today, and I set this up for you, not knowing we are going to have any prizes this week. This was going to be a quiz Adam Giardino for the listening audience only. But then the lovely Jenna popped into the studio before the show, and she goes, have you guys given away your Wolfpack playoff tickets? No. We have Wolfpack yeah. playoff tickets to give away? Let's do it. <laughs> News to us. We'll give them away today, foe show. Wolfpack. Ow, ow, ow. Game number three against those fancy Bruin Bears in Providence. Pinkies out when they drink their wine and cheese. That's how they play their hockey. And they beat a 6-0 on Friday. You know what that means? Payback. Payback. Game three. Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we have tickets for you and your crew. Four packs, Jardino. We have four packs as long as they can get the answer right. What are you asking them? Great question, Adam. And also, if you're like me and you don't have three friends, you can still take the four pack and come yourself. Yeah. And then pick but up, make three friends. There are three friends out in the streets of Hartford uh-huh. dying to go with you to the XL Center mm-hmm. to root on our Wolf Pack. And the Calder Cup's coming back! Back where it rightfully belongs. So Adam Giardino usually comes on this show on Fridays. Usually pick his brain today? all oh, things Monday? UConn. This oh, is a okay. Monday for you. Yeah. And when I asked you, I told you Dibs wasn't going to be here. You want to sit in on the show. I was wondering, oh, man, Adam's probably got a hopscotch tournament to cover. Or maybe he's going to, I don't know. We, sailing was last weekend. It was the Sailing National Championships. I actually told a lot of people in the building you were going to be here today. And I said, yeah, he's fresh off a sailing championship. And they said, no way. And then, yes, he mm-hmm. even had to fill for a no wind delay in the sailing championships. How much did you know about sailing before you took that job? Uh, you say yes, and then you learn. And honestly, <laughs> my two color commentators were That's what outstanding. You said. Yeah. yeah, one of the guys, um, the color commentator, uh, Clay Johnson, he was runner up for an Olympic spot back in 2012. So he, he knows what he's doing. He knows more about that than I could ever pretend to. And this was college championships, right? Team championships. So it's two people per boat. It's three boats for, say, Stanford, three boats for Boston College. And it's six boats. You finish one, two, three, four, five, six. You got to combine the numbers. So if you finish one, three, four, and the other team finishes two, five, six, then. All right. So, but it's great because the boats are setting screens for each other. They're picking each other off. What? Like it's team racing. So it's not. It's much different than what you'd expect. They're not all trying to finish. The first boat that gets to the finish line slams on the brakes and then comes back to try to set a screen. So they're teammates. It's great. The more you know. I did not know I was going to learn so much about team sailing today, as Jardino always schools us on some sport we had no idea was going on in the world. And now it's our turn to school you, sir. So I did not give you a game board today so you could play along with our listeners. Now, don't shout out your answers. I will not. I want you helping the listeners. Um, And also a little caveat today. Typically, I have multiple choice of three choices. For you, I made it a little bit harder, and I put four choices down. So for the listeners, the first caller will get first crack, but if he or she does not get it right, we'll keep the same question. We won't give the right answer, and we'll let the next caller, listener, 
guessing on the three options still available. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody's got the rules. We're now, giving away 16 tickets. That's the bottom line. That's the goal. We're, Hopefully we okay. can get those kind of smarty pants listeners out there. Now, the questions are a little, a little difficult because I know you're a smarty pants and I wanted to somewhat stump you. Now, I came up or I found several sports, a couple of that I just found this, this year, maybe a couple of years ago, that I super duper love and two that I did not know existed until today. Now, I'm going to give you some clues, listeners, about the sport and some multiple choice. You pick the right answer. We're hooking you up with four playoff tickets for Wednesday night's Wolfpack Providence Bruins game. 860-522-3776. Still lines available. 522-3776. Kurt and John are working the phones. Kurt, who is our first player? Andrew. Andrew, what is up, Andrew? Ray to how? Excellent. Ready to how? Andrew's a part of our pack. Excellent. Now, Andrew, listen to the clues. Listen for the multiple choice. Pick the right one, and you are going to see the pack. Are you ready, sir? Yes, I am. All right, Andrew. This is a contact sport that originated in ancient India. And I saw this walking by a bar at Mohegan Sun. It was on the television. I was like, what the hell is this? So they're playing this today. Very popular in India. Televised popular in India. The object of the game is to run into the opponent's team's zone. Touch as many players as possible and then run back to your zone before you're tackled. It is full contact tag. That's what I call it. But the real name is either... A, Mugata, B, Bobadi, C, Kabadi, D, Cricket. What do you think, Andrew? I'm going to go with C. Uh, yeah. You are correct. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Was that what you were going to say? I, I just, you, you lost me. It was a, right. I went into a trance. By the time you said cricket, I came out of it. Excellent. Andrew, you are correct. Ow, ow, ow. Send Andrew to the pack. Stay on hold, sir. Kabaddi. Spell C. it. K-A-B-A-D-D-I. Kabaddi. It's seven on seven. It is wild, dude. So, like, the one, like, one person is on. Like, he's like, mm-hmm. let's call it it. He yeah, is right. It. Yeah. And uh, he, everybody's just kind of waiting for him to cross the line. As soon as he crosses the line, that allows you to tackle him. But if he touches you and runs away as quick as possible and doesn't get tackled, that's a point per person he touches. Sounds dumb. Huge in India right now. It is one of the most popular sports on television. So he doesn't have his teammates like waiting in jail to release them. It's, no, they it's, can't help. It's like one on seven at that point. But then you have your and you're other just throwing mates. stiff arms. Really is what it comes down to. And it is physical, man. There are no pads in this thing, and it is full. Like once you once you tag somebody, it is on. It Love is it. on. Oh. I, at first, I was like, what the hell is this? And then two and a half hours later, I was hooked. <laughs> Couldn't stop watching. Congratulations, Andrew, him and his crew. It sounds like we sent a pretty good one there to uh, Wolfpack. We need loud and proud people, and Andrew and his posse definitely will be that. 860-522-3776. 522-3776. So far, one for the listeners, zero for Jardino. Ooh. Excellent. Kurt, who we got? Ashton. Ashton, what is up? How you doing? Doing well. Hopefully you know your obscure sports. I'm going to tell you all about a sport and then give you some multiple choice to choose from. Are you ready, Ashton? I am ready. All right, Ashton. This is an extremely violent game. Extremely violent game. It is only played in Florence, Italy. Most describe the game as a combination between football and Rugby and MMA. Ooh, Jardino's got a smile on his face like he knows this. Here's your choices, Ashton. Is this sport called Socera Javar? B, Calcio Storico? C, Trattoria de Fis? D, Supreme Football? What do you think, Ashton? Uh, I'm going to go with Calcio Storico. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Woo! <laughs> 
It's two for two. Yes, Ashton, you are correct. Stay on hold, sir. Let's send Ashton and his crew to the Wolfpack on Wednesday. Cal Calcio Storico, sir. Oh. Uh. It, you expected a Giardino not to know Calcio Storico? Come on. <laughs> so you know this sport. I'm oh, I'm familiar with it, yeah. It's exactly as you described. Super entertaining. Uh, I, I don't know why it came across my radar because, like you said, it is very specific to not just Italy but a very Florence. Flo Florence, Italy. So this is so cool, man. I want to go to this, and I don't know if I'll ever have the privilege. Like, this is a bucket list sporting event. Two weeks out of the year, out of the 52, two weeks is the only weeks it's played. The first is between uh, as, as a four-team four tournament. Semifinals, final. Semifinals happen one Saturday. Next Saturday are the finals. And a lot of people that play in the semifinals don't play in the finals because they are literally beat up to the point where they're still in the hospital. So you got to have a mm -hmm. good reserve team to take on the finals. Now... It is a four-team tournament, and Florence is divided into quadrants. The only way you can get on a team is to be born within one of those quadrants, and that quadrant is the team you play for for all of time. You ever seen the Hunger Games? It is a lot like that. Yeah, you're born into your district. Correct. And the best part is you've just withstood the semifinals. You win the championship. You get nothing except they have to make you a free dinner. Wow. That's it. <laughs> Bragging rights and some good pasta, I'm assuming. A lot of the guys that have been members of a certain quadrant team will make sure that their baby is born in a specific quadrant. No matter where they are in the world at the moment, they will fly and live within that quadrant until the baby is born. That way the son can eventually play for one of the teams in Calcio Torico. It is like MMA. It is like go, and then everybody just starts punching each other in the face. You have one ball, and the ball has to get to the other side of the field, but it's like all dirt. It's not really a field. It looks it, like it's, hell. It's not. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to play it. I just wanted to watch it. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever want to play it. All right, we get two for two here. And, man, this it might get a little bit harder from here. I don't know if Ashton and Andrew won the easy ones, but so far so good from the listeners. I'm going to give the listeners that point, too. Sorry, Giardino. 2-0 listeners over Giardino. 860-522-3776. Sounds like Kurt has one ready to go. Kurt, who you got? Yeah, Mike's in Windsor Lux. All right, Mike, are you our Mystic Dan winner? I am. All right. What we have to ask. I haven't put the radio in 30 years, and I don't know how I managed to get through on two separate occasions, but let's have it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you got to tell us how you picked Mystic Dan? What went into that? Mystic Connecticut. Oh! I didn't know anything. It was the only when you were going through the names. I'm like, Mystic, I'm, gonna, I'm a local guy. I'm like, I'm going to go for Connecticut. And uh, that was a great race. That was Unbelievable. I'm sure it was even better from your perspective than any of us who didn't have Mystic Dan. All right, maybe we can make you a winner twice here in the same month there, Mike. All right, I'm going to give you some clues about a sport. Wait for the multiple choice. Pick the right one. And you're going to see the Wolf Pack on Wednesday. Are you ready, sir? Copy that. All right, this is a racing game. There actually are national championships held for this at Day's Lock in the UK. You throw a stick on one side of the bridge going upstream. You run to the other side of the bridge. Everyone throws a stick. And whoever's stick makes it to the other side of the bridge wins. Love Is it, it called A, poo sticks, B, loser sprint, C, sloppy logs, D, tortoise sticks? I'm going to go B. No. Mm, I am sorry, Mike. Try back. It is not oh, no. loser sprint. No, it is so sorry. <laughs> that is wrong. Yes. Let's give someone else a chance with just this question. Again, it is a racing game. National championships are held with this, which is just amazing. People may say that about your sailing too, so don't smirk so so much at this game. You don't know. It's in uh, Days Lock in the U.K. I think that's an important part. It's in the U.K. All right, 860-522-3776. Who you got now, Kurt? 
Raymond. Hey, Ray. Hello. All right, Ray, you lucked up. You've got a second chance at the same question with less multiple choice. I'm going to read you a description of a game, give you multiple choice. You get it right, you're going to see the Wolfpack. Are you ready, Ray? I'm ready. It's a racing game. There are championships. You throw one stick. Giardino throws a stick. I throw a stick. On one side of the bridge, we run to the other side of the bridge to see which stick comes through first. Is that called poo sticks, sloppy logs, or tour de sticks? C. Mm, I am sorry, Ray. I am sorry, Mike. The correct answer? It's poo sticks. Whoa! Jardino gets it right. And I did, I had it. I thought it was uh, twiddle twigs, but I guess it was poo sticks. Poo so sticks. it's all, you know, us that, you know, that are in the community, it's twiddle twigs, <laughs> but poo sticks for the rest of you. I'm, I'm thinking this is a great guess by Jardino. You don't know where the name poo sticks comes from, do you? I don't, but I did know that. Yeah, the, as soon as you said poo sticks is option A, I had it. I was like, oh yeah, that's what it, that's what it is. Now, uh, that might have been it. Might have been in a Sports Illustrated article at some point. Now yeah. let me give you the spelling of poo sticks. It is P O O H oh, sticks, bother. like that. You are so correct, sir. Yeah. It is actually from the original oh. novel of Winnie the Pooh. Written in the United Kingdom, it is a game that him and Teddy Ruxpin, I think, used to play on the bridge, and now they play it for cold hard cash in the UK. Poo sticks is an actual sport. Maybe you'll get a job calling some play-by-play of some poo sticks. That's right. I mean, I'm sure it's very exhilarating waiting for the other stick to come across the bridge. You don't see the stick. How are you going to know which stick comes through? Wait, wait, wait. You said it's whichever one goes furthest. No, whichever one comes first. First, first under the So, br- like, Got we it. all have sticks, and I guess they all have to be different colors or something to know which stick is yours, mm-hmm. which stick is mine. We all throw it at the same time, and then we run the other side of the bridge, and then whoever stick makes it out on the other end first wins. What a game. Got it. What's the difference between that and the Kentucky Derby, honestly? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> really isn't much. Buy a nose, right? I mean, like, imagine if we did poo sticks like all the time and bet on it hardcore. There'd be people out there that would analyze poo sticks as if it was like, you know, this stick, this guy, he throws the stick. It always comes through on the stick. He's just got great angle, great wind. He uses pers- hickory. He uses, yeah, great That's hickory right. stick. Everybody's, you know, denying hickory, but I'm telling you, hickory's the poo stick of choice. All right, enough on poo sticks. We got room for one more. 860 522 3776. He got Kurt. Let's go to Casey. Casey, what is up? How are we doing, fellas? Doing well. I'm trying to get one more winner to the Wolf Pack. Now, this is a new game that we're describing to the people, Casey. So listen for the description and listen for the multiple choice. You get it right, you win. Are you ready, Casey? I'm ready. It's a racing game, another racing game. This originated in Finland in 1992. The object of the game is for a male to run through an obstacle course while carrying a female. Giardino already thinks he has it. Is it Mm -hmm. A, friend frolic, B, wife carrying, C, zipper dorson doodle, or D, marriage? I'm going to have to go with wife carrying. It's not on the nose. Yeah. All right. Excellent job, Casey. Wife carrying is correct. Stay on hold, brother. We were going to hook you up with some wolf pack. Excellent job. Was that what your guess was going to be, Jardino? It's funny. I almost mentioned wife carrying earlier in the segment, what? and I'm glad that I didn't. Really? I'm thrilled that I didn't. How yeah. did you know about wife carrying being a sport? Uh, it's just, uh, uh, again, I don't know, just uh, <laughs> spending too much time reading too much stuff. <laughs> that would be another great sport to break down, like play I think by play. That is, I think it's been on ESPN. 1992. I think that's, a, I think that's one of those Ocho? Ocho, do those Ocho. I think that's been on the Ocho. Well, there's a big cash prize every year. It is a muddy mess of wife carrying. Now, I wondered, too, there's been a lot of questions about wife carrying. Is there a weight limit? Do you have to really be married? Like, there's a lot of people who have some questions about uh, breaking down wife carrying. 
So there you go, Giardino. There's some some gigs coming up for you. Wife carrying, poo sticks. Oh, if you got to do a Calcio Storico play oh by gosh. play, that would be wonderful. Kabaddi. Look into Kabaddi. We have you know, we have a great Indian population around here that is just crazy about cricket. I think it's only months away they get crazy about Kabaddi, and then your phone starts ringing. Have you seen uh, Extreme Tag on the of ESPN? Of course. Right. Kurt and I love Extreme uh, Tag. It, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's speaking to me in the same way that is. That really has hooked up the parkour fella oh, yeah. <laughs> with an actual sport to, to play. <laughs> Congratulations, Casey, Ashton, Andrew. They're all a part of our pack, especially on Wednesday night as Wolfpack take on Pro. Providence. If you can't make it to Wednesday's game, which I feel for you, $2 beers there at Wednesday's game as well. Friday's game will be going on. That will be game four as the pack take on Providence in the Calder Cup playoffs. Congratulations to all who won. To get deeper more into this matchup, we talked to our friend Alex Thomas, the voice of the Wolfpack. Let's you listen into that next. When we return here on the Rob Dibble Show on Fox Sports 97.9 Hartford, 1300 Fox Sports New Haven. I have an accident report.